to Let's Chat, the Tennessee Valley's premier show focusing on lifestyle and entertainment with Jess Raby and Chip Chapman, bringing you smart shopping tips, community events, and the newest trends. Now, Let's Chat. Glad to have you with us here. Jamal sitting in for Jess. It is Monday, April the 1st. That's April Fool's Day. It is April Fool's Day. We've kind of gotten uh, a little lazy this year. We didn't have too many pranks going. Yeah, and the ones I've done in years past, the statute of limitations is all expired on them. Oh, so that's perfect. We See? might visit with those here a little <laughs> bit later. But, you know, everybody does some sort of April Fool's Day thing, whether it's in the office, on your friends, on the phone, or something like that. But maybe the biggest thing ever in April Fool's history came to us courtesy of Sports Illustrated. You heard about this? It's the curious case of Sid Finch. And this is by George Plimpton. This goes back to, what, 1985. Now, he was a pitcher that, and the story was, that he would use mind control to throw a 168-mile-per-hour <laughs> fastball. You want to talk about a fast pitch? And he was also <laughs> supposedly a yoga master a master yoga player, and he also, whenever he was pitching, would only wear one big boot. That's all you need is one boot, right? Well, if you read the story closely, the first letter of each word spelled out, Happy April Fool's Day. <laughs> says, uh, furthermore, Sid Finch is a fictional baseball player, the subject of the notorious April Fool's Day hoax article, The Curious Case of Sid Finch, written by George Plimpton. And again, that goes back to the April 1st, 1985 issue of Sports Illustrated. And that's definitely an April Fool's Day joke that's going to go down in history. It's hard to top that. I've had to hit Google <laughs> to try and find if I could get anything that could come up with it. The best I got was April 1st, 1957. BBC had a show called Panorama. Right. Where they ran a story about pasta growing on trees, the Swiss spaghetti harvest, and how it was enjoying a great year because... The spaghetti weevils were under control. The spaghetti weevils under control. It's and always a, a good thing when that happens. You know, when the spaghetti weevils are under control, and when this coming out in the 1950s, TV was brand new, and everyone trusted everything they saw on TV. You know, one of the other greatest big hoaxes, even though it wasn't related to April Fool's Day, had to have been Orson Welles' The War of the Worlds. That's right. Everyone we, knows that one. If that one had <laughs> been around then, boy, wouldn't that be uh, amazing. Anyway. When you're talking around the office today or your kids ask you when they get home, what's the greatest April Fool's prank ever? Tell them the story of Sid Finch. That's right. Part baseball meister, part yoga meister, and part <laughs> brain washer. All around talented guy, I'll tell you that. <laughs> All right, it's, uh, you spent a lot of time this weekend watching basketball, I'm I, sure. I hardly was able to get out of the house. <laughs> and, and it was between either watching basketball or burning what was left in my bracket. <laughs> that, that was my time outside because... This Final Four, I, I completely didn't see it coming, and I know a lot of other people did uh, No, I didn't see it coming, and I know I spent a lot of time watching it also. And it seems like some of the games have really gone into overtime. Um, while we don't have anything like what Warren Buffett is doing here, which doesn't come as a big surprise, but, you know, Warren Buffett had this thing about a million dollars to any one of his 1,000-plus employees who could perfectly pick all the way up. That's right. They had to get to the end of the Sweet 16. This year, the moment came after the first 23 games when the first, the last perfect brackets were, were done. And what's actually really funny about this story, it's an Oregon alumni that picked against Oregon, and that's what ruined the bracket. So you had two winners. They split the, the, the prize, and each got $500,000, or split the $100,000 prize, and each got $50,000 over at Yahoo Finance. So it was really interesting that, you know, when you get to these brackets, there's don't, no allegiances. Don't Because think. no one knows what's happening. Don't think. This guy said, quote, <laughs> I looked over it fast and picked it off the top of my head. If you spend too much time thinking about it, if you think you know college basketball, those are typically the people that have the worst <laughs> brackets. What was your surprise guy. game of the week? My surprise game? I didn't see Auburn making this kind of run. Did you not? Up. I didn't see Auburn or Texas Tech coming at all. I, was, I had both of them out. I always liked uh, Bruce Pearl back when he was here coaching. He is at a great Tennessee. coach. He great certainly coach. is. He certainly is. One cool thing we had here in the uh, Tennessee Valley area over the weekend was the walk a mile in her shoes. Many of you, I know, doubt took part in this. And you've heard the old saying you can't understand someone else's experiences until you have walked a mile in their shoes. 
Saturday morning, hundreds came together at Coolidge Park to bring awareness to sexual assault, a sexual assault and domestic violence. That's right. Men and women put on their best heels and participated in the mile walk, ready to make a difference. Various community partners were on site to educate the community about the realities of sexual violence while supporting victim support services. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, that was certainly something to see, at least the video part of it. I'd say so, Chip. I don't know if I could make it a mile in heels. I'm just going to put that out there. I don't think I could walk a mile in those shoes. I couldn't walk a mile in those shoes from here to that door. <laughs> I'll tell you that. We've got some great stuff coming up a little bit later on this half hour. Jamal's going to hang out with us until the bottom of the hour. Right now, let's check in with this week's edition of Tech Bite. Many of us are on the go, and that means we can be forgetful. The good news is smart plugs can help with this if we accidentally leave an appliance on. Let's see how they work. I'm Emily Gasulo, and this is Tech Bite. If you're looking to get a smart home at some point, Best Buy's Nathan Roach says getting a smart plug is a good place to start. A perfect example is, have you ever left the house and, and thought, oh my gosh, did I leave a curling iron on or did I leave the coffee pot on? Now you can literally pull out an app and, and see, and if you did, you can turn it off right then and there. All you have to do is put the smart plug into the wall, just like a regular outlet. If you have a voice assistant like Google Home or Amazon Alexa, you can just tell it to turn the device on or off. So you'll buy one smart plug for each product that you want to use, and of course you can move those around. So if you if you use it with one thing and then want to change it out, that's fine. Um, but we always recommend getting one smart plug for each product, and that will make it smart. And then it ties to a lot of the other the the smart electronics that you already have in your house, or it may be the beginning of, of something great in your home. You don't even have to have a voice assistant to use a smart plug. They can work with any of your appliances just as well without them. You do not have to be high tech to use smart plugs, which is the great thing. And, and one of the things that I think people, people don't even realize about smart plugs is it's a great way to, um, to deter thieves. So smart plugs can actually be used to turn lights on and off, TVs on and off, uh, multiple appliances on and off, and it gives that perception that somebody is home when you're away. So it's another way to just help secure your house and, and, and keep your home safe. Another note, if you have a voice assistant like Amazon Alexa or Google Home, Roach says you don't have to get the corresponding smart plug to go with it. Any brand should work. I'm Emily Gasulo, and that's this week's Tech Bite.